in this video I'll show you a quick and easy way to paint three small landscapes using one of these household cleaning sponges. I like to put on some gloves before using this technique to prevent getting too much paint on my hands. I'll start by getting out a few of my cleaning sponges. I don't have any particular brand, so uh, just use whatever you have on hand. These are the cheapest ones I could get. I'll also get out four acrylic colors. I chose a Mars yellow, a Bordeaux, and an indigo blue along with a titanium white and I'm going to be painting on 140 pound watercolor paper that's 300 GSM. Before I begin I submerge the sponge in water and wring out most of that water. You want the sponge to be really moist but not drenched with water. I'm also going to moisten my watercolor paper to make the paint flow more easily. Cleaning sponges are a great way to achieve a variety of loose marks that can't be achieved in any other way. So this technique is great for beginners, but also for artists looking to loosen up and simplify their painting style. So let's take a look. This is a wet into wet painting technique and a great way to blend colors and make a soft gradual transition between two different colors. It can often be difficult to achieve this nice gradual transition using a brush. So this is a great alternative if you are struggling to make those gradual transition um, as we often see in a sunrise for example. Start with the lightest color and then slowly add the darker color and then using a clean sponge or the other end of the sponge you uh, go back and forth and kind of merge the two layers. For the next technique clean the sponge in water or use a new sponge. On the edge of the sponge you can add yellow paint on about half of the sponge and blue paint on the other half of the sponge. Now drag the sponge across the paper and press down evenly on it to get a nice even application of the two colors at the same time. You can go back over the same area a few times to get a better coverage, but if you do so, please try and keep the sponge leveled to maintain an even stroke. Now let's take a look at the third technique, which is a layering technique and really great for when you want to paint mountains, for example. Start by adding yellow for the background and the sky. And I'm gonna add a bit more water on the sponge here to get it flowing a bit more evenly. And now I'm adding some burgundy to make a darker, warm shade. Try dabbing the paint on as well, which can give another um, effect when you are layering the paints. I'll add some indigo blue to make a really dark color here at the bottom. While I still have that dark color on the sponge, I will add some titanium white to create a light grayish color, which will help to create the shape of some distant mountains. Try to make the mountain tops uh, different heights and make the shapes of them slightly different to create a variety and make it look more natural. While the paint is drying, clean your sponge or get a new one and cut it into smaller pieces using a pair of scissors.
Now using one of the smaller sponges, mix a really dark color using the indigo blue and Bordeaux. And use this color to paint a new layer of mountain tops. Uh, this time you should also try and vary the shapes and sizes of the mountain tops to create interest and variety. Use the straight edge of the sponge to paint in smaller details in the mountains as uh, these darker mountains are actually closer to us and therefore you will perceive more details than the ones further away. Using another small sponge I'm going to mix a light blue color and paint a little bit of uh, ocean or a lake maybe here in front of the mountains. I think it would look nice as a contrast. Wait for the paint to dry or use a hair dryer. Now that I showed you a few of the different techniques you can use when painting with a cleaning sponge, now let's turn these into three different landscape paintings. Let me show you how. Using a light blue mixture, I'm going to connect these two areas up here. I'll mix a little more of this light blue and paint it into and on top of the darker blue. It's okay if the darker layers show through a bit. I'll also use a palette knife to scrape into the paint while it is still moist to reveal a bit more of that darker color underneath. I'll use another clean sponge with some yellow color on it to connect these two areas down here. You can always use a bit of water to get the paint flowing a bit better. Now use a hairdryer to dry completely. Now I want to show you this homemade viewfinder. Basically it's just the backing of a paper pad that I cut into two L-shaped pieces and this is what you can do with them. Use them as adjustable frames to isolate part of your painting. Here I will use it to find and finish three different landscape paintings. Here's the first one and here is the second one. And up here I will paint the third one. I don't think they need uh, that much, just one little detail and uh, we're good to go. Using a small flat brush, I'll mix up some titanium white and Mars yellow to create a light yellow color that I will use to paint in the sun. And I'll dab with a little bit of paper towel to just remove the excess paint. Let's move the viewfinder to find our next landscape. 
The colors kind of remind me of nighttime or a moonlit landscape, so uh, I think I want to uh, paint a, uh, a full moon. Let's move the viewfinder one last time. And this time the landscape reminds me of a ocean sunset. I think that's what it is. So I want to mix a very nice yellowish light bright yellow color and add it up here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. to indicate a nice big sun up here and I'll dab a little bit okay I'll just reapply a little bit of paint again so there you go with a cleaning sponge and a homemade viewfinder you've got three small landscapes ready to frame or use as postcards cut them out and give one to a friend. Maybe you don't want to use this technique on your entire painting, but then simply use the technique with your current way of painting as just one more way to loosen up. Now, if you don't know how to integrate loose painting into your art, I want to point you to my guide, Proven Ways to Loosen Up Your Painting Style. One thing is that you know you want to paint in a free and loose style, but uh, knowing what options you have and what to do exactly is entirely different. So uh, check out my free guide, uh, find it a link below this video and see you next time.